Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now I have done French infantry on the channel before, but there's a couple of important differences you'll see for the fellow in front of me. First off, he is a chasseur à pied, or pied, or I, I will struggle with that pronunciation. Uh, he is a slightly different version of French infantry, and we're going to cover how to paint that. And as well, he is one of the brand new infantry plastics from Warlord Games. So there's a few differences between these guys and the War Games Atlantic. Uh, really the main difference I would suggest is that the fellas from War Games Atlantic have the little puddle base which makes them slightly taller. Uh, if you cut that off, they actually march up against one another very well. Uh, likewise, some of you have mentioned in the past that you struggle to get your hands on Vallejo paints that I recommend. So this dude here is painted using entirely Citadel or Army Painter products because I figure those are the ones that if you walk into your friendly local gaming store, you'll be able to get those off the shelf no problem. So all of those paints will be listed in the description below, and thank you very much to Warlord for letting me have a spur of these fancy new Frenchmen. Let's get started. So first of all, once you've assembled your miniature, the first thing to do is to prime him. Now if you are using Citadel paints for this, then there's really only one easy choice for that, and that is going to be Xandri Dust, which is what I've used here. Now I have seen some people get quite nice results by using Xandri Dust as the main color of the uniform as well. So kind of saves you a step, but to my eye it doesn't look quite right. So we're going to use instead for our base coat on the uniform Talon Sand. Now funnily enough, this is actually fairly close to Green Ochre, which is the Vallejo color that I would use here. Um, it will need a couple of thin coats, and it is slightly lighter than Green Ochre. You see, I'm not worried if I hit his packs or his trousers or what have you, because we are going to do a little bit with those later. Uh, most importantly is getting down this base coat. If you're painting regular French infantry, make sure that you're getting his trousers and his putties at the same time as well. Uh, this fella, I am going to paint him up as one of the... Oh, I can never remember the name. I always keep wanting to call him a Chardonnay. That's not it. I promise you, I'll, <laughs> I'll have it by the next time I'm talking about it. Uh, but as you see... Just quickly blasting over all the uniform to get that nice color. Now we're going to move on and lay down the base coat for his skin. Now I'm going to use here tanned flesh from the Army Painter. Um, it's a little bit lighter, maybe a touch more warm than Bugman's Glow would be. But as I'm fond of pointing out, there's no right way of painting skin. I might have watered that down just a little bit too much. But oh well. Uh, it's going to need two coats to go over anyhow. So the only part at this point you want to try and avoid is going to be his uniform. If you hit his hair, his hat, and all that sort of stuff, don't worry about it. This boy's got some big jug ears, though. <laughs> now for his packs and his gear, let's spin them around, and I'm going to use Karak Stone on these. Now this is probably... it's not quite as light as I might like, uh, but we can come back and highlight it later on if I need to. I've watered this down with just a tiny wee dot of water in the paint itself. Um, I'm not going to mention it specifically for every single paint, but just enough to help it flow. You see, we've still got some coverage. Don't listen to folks who are just automatically telling you, thin it to a milky consistency, because that's not always going to be the right answer. Uh, once I've gone over this top pack, I'm going to do the one on the sides, and there's a little water bottle cover as well. And one thing I'm glad I did remember is that the strap on the rifles is also going to be canvas in most cases as well. So your Karak Stone can pull quite a lot of work there. I'm now going to use XV88 as the wood color for the weapon. Uh, I think this is the Mass 36. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the little sheet that will come with the, uh, the box that you'll get. So I'm having to Google... An awful lot here to make sure I've got the right colors and such, but uh, hopefully it comes out close enough it's still useful to you. I'm pretty sure I've got this right though. Now I've gone and done that rifle now because we're going to swap up to some black. I've got my Abaddon black and we're going to paint in, funnily enough, the black details on the rifle now that we've done the wood. Uh, and as well, there is a little strap on his beret. Now what I'd suggest is instead of trying to paint a straight line, uh, if you've got twitchy hands like I do, instead of trying to paint a straight line, just start as close as you can to his face 
drawing your brush away from the skin. So we're also going to paint his hair in with this at the same step. Uh, but you see, in this case, I can get quite close to the, the skin, and the mess I'm making is on the beret. And I do not care one jot, because we're going to paint that quite a dark blue later. Now at long last, we can start adding the iconic blue of the Chasseur à pied. And uh, I'm hoping my French pronunciation isn't as bad as my Italian. I'm using here Cantor Blue, um, although a really good substitute for this from the Army Painter would be their Deep Blue. Um, I'd pick that because it's got a slightly grayish tint to it, very, very faint, uh, but still very dark. And that is definitely true of the Chasseur uniform. Uh, so this covers quite well. His beret, first of all, and uh, also the trousers. Mind that you don't paint in this section of his coat, which is visible between his legs. Uh, and also, his patties would be in the same color here. So, this will take a little bit of time, but not difficult to do at all. Now, especially on his trousers, you will find that that'll take you two coats. Over the Zandri dust, that blue will go a little bit green, and you don't want that. What I'm going to turn to next is Fur Brown from the Army Painter. And this is what we're going to use to paint in all of the leather details. Um, you could use something like maybe Doombull Brown, although that's going to be quite a bit darker. Um, it is really up to you. A nice warm reddish leather color is perfect. And as well as his belt and all that sort of carry on, uh, you'll probably see on the product pages these, uh, these packs get a bit intense when it comes to the details that are on them. So you can, if you're not confident, don't worry too much about painting the leather trim and the handles on these. Um, but if you've got a steady hand or a bit of patience, remember that you can come back with that Carrick Stone and tidy it up if you need to. I promise once you've done that a few times, you're just going to fly around them. I'm now going to finish him off with some Mournfang Brown for his little boots. Uh, this will cover pretty well. But towards the front, you may want a second coat. I'll leave you to be the judge of that. Now that is all of the base coats done, uh, but there is one last thing we're going to do before we shade them, and that's going to be to dry brush just a couple of the details on them to give it a bit more depth before we shade, and that way we won't really have to highlight later on. Now what I've got is one of my little battered old makeup brushes and some Tyrant Skull. I want to get most of this off my brush before I start dry brushing. So I'm flicking along the edge of the base there to see what I'll leave behind and then start going over the edges of his uniform just very, very lightly at first, building up that color. And you'll see, after a few passes, I get quite a natural shift in color. So I'm going to do this over all of the high points of his coat uh, all the stuff that would take a bit of time later on, if I was going to painstakingly highlight this, we're going to skip it. So each time you do have to load up your brush again, make sure how much you leave behind, and then go in there. Um, if you're getting a slightly chalky finish, don't worry about it, because we are going to varnish this later, and that'll get rid of most of that. So after a few passes on the jacket, as you start leaving next to nothing behind, you can also use a little bit of that same Tyrant Skull just to catch the edges of the blue, his pack and everything. It'll look a little bit funny now, but when we shade it, it's going to come together. So speaking of shade, what I've got is one of my little bottles here. I've decanted some of the new Agrax Earth shade into this, and some Lamian Medium. I'm going to mix these up half and half. You could of course use this neat, straight from the bottle, but I tend to find the new Earth shade stains some of the colors a little bit more than I would like. So Adding the medium thins out the effect a little bit and makes it behave a bit more like the old Agrax Earthshade did. What we're going to do is shade everything. Pile it onto his face, his uniform, and anywhere that it clumps up, like say I do that, now let's just shift some of that around while it's still wet. So over the entire miniature, just bucket this on, let it settle for a couple of seconds, and for example here, that's going to be way too much, slurp it up with your brush and put it somewhere else that it needs to be. Once you've covered over the entire miniature, we'll put them somewhere sunny. That'll be about half an hour to dry. See what we've got once that is done. Once you've had plenty of time to dry, you'll have something that looks like this. And you'll see it has even brought down that blue a little bit. 
and left some of our uh, dry brush highlighting intact. Uh, but I am going to be a little bit more fussy, and what I have here, this is Griffin Blue from the Army Painter. This is a little bit lighter than the Fang, but not quite as light as Rust Grey. So for a really deep blue like this where I want a little bit of grey to it, this is a wonderful highlight. What I'm going to do is, using the uh, dry brush as a guide, is just pick some of the parts where I want to lighten up the trousers. Get a little bit of definition in there. And I'm also going to do the same thing with his beret. Now straight off the bat that will look quite extreme, but don't worry. When we varnish this, it's going to bring that together a little better. Go on to highlighting his skin. Now what I'm going to use is Cadian Flesh Tone. What I'm going to paint over is most of the skin again, just leaving some of the shaded tanned flesh in the recesses. And then we'll use a touch of Kislev Flesh to dot in things like his nose, his cheekbones, his brow, the backs of his knuckles and such. Now uh, it's been, it, like, it has actually been more than a month since I painted anything, so hopefully yours will look a little better than, <laughs> than mine. And the very last highlight that I'm going to apply is a little bit of Iron Warriors, which uh, won't look like much of a highlight going on, but trust me when you will see it, especially at table distance. Just a little bit of this on the edges of some of the black details, metallic particularly, and uh, this will work wonders. Now let's see the power of a decent varnish. What we've got here is Varnish Plus from Instar. Um, I know it's a bit of an odd one seeing that I've been talking about using Army Painter and Citadel, but I just really like this. Um, you would suggest the uh, Army Painter's brush-on matte varnish also works quite well. Um, Citadel doesn't really have a true matte. Uh, the Storm Shield is quite nice, but it is more of a semi, like a semi satin. Um, and for my World War II miniatures in particular, I do prefer a true matte. So that's why I'm using this Instar stuff. But I'm going to go around this a couple of times. Just make sure that I'm not letting any of this pool too heavily. And once that's dry, watch the magic. And there we have it, the power of a really good varnish. Uh, in particular, you'll see around the back how that dulls everything down. If you're ever worried about uh, strong tone or Agrax earth shade, people complain quite regularly, oh, it dries shiny. Yeah, so varnish it. Uh, it is that simple, and the product itself, whichever one you're using, is still super useful. So get a good varnish cannot recommend it enough. Anyhow, what I am going to do now is pop his base on him, and the recipe for that will be in the description. Let's get a look at this fella once he is all finished. And there at last, our French infantryman is complete. Now, is he fancy? Nope, not particularly, but the job is done, and pretty quickly, I might say. I think if you were to skip the blue trousers of the Chasseur, then you would probably end up getting these guys out on the table very, very quickly. Because being able to just talon sand everything, uh, and dry brushes, trousers, and putties, and everything all at the same time, I think is going to help you smash these out even quicker. But if you do want to take advantage of some of the cool new parts in the French infantry box from Warlord, then, well, it's berries. <laughs> Pick a slightly different color and go mad. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. Thank you so much, folks. You're the guys who are keeping me ticking with this mad nonsense that I do. So any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all and you all enjoy the rest of your day.